everybody. How's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much for uh, showing your support for the show and for and uh, for subscribing. Uh, haven't been able to put a, a, an episode of the Geekinator out with uh, any regularity. I've been uh, super busy at work, and um, the only show I've been able to put out with any regularity at all has been Linux News Log, is the, one of our sister shows. But I figured I've got a four-day weekend coming up. I got some new goodies. Um, for those of you who watch my YouTube channel, uh, this will be the second video where I'm replacing this 28 millimeter lens, um, that, uh, I was using to film all of my episodes on with, uh, Canon's new EFS 24 millimeter F 2.8 STM lens, significantly nicer simply because I, I have, uh, my <laughs> microphone is attached to the camera and it, it t tended to, I'd, to uh, let a lot of uh, focusing noise into uh, the video. So at any rate, uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some of the cool stuff I found for this episode over at dumb out at dumb-out.net. Uh, EU is calling for a Google breakup of Google. This is kind of weird. EU politicians have called for a breakup of Google, which has caused a massive backlash among several U.S. tech companies as they fire back that European companies are more jealous of American power than they are concerned about antitrust violations. Uh, according to a senior EU official, the American companies are using the European Commission as a battleground among themselves. They're the ones coming to us without complaints. They're the ones who are not happy when rivals present concessions and say that these are not enough. So, uh, you know, it's a sticky situation and we'll see how this plays out. You know, Google is kind of turned into the new Microsoft. So I'm curious to see how this all plays out in the end. From uh, designandtrend.com, Lyft's new program turns ordinary motorists into Lyft drivers. This is kind of cool. Lyft's latest driver destination program aims to bring back the company's carpooling service, according to Tech Times. By using the program, ordinary car drivers can check if there are other people nearby who are going in the same direction. They can then coordinate with the passengers and pick them up just like a Lyft driver. Uh, the driver destination works with the company's Lyft line app. So uh, pretty cool. Um, you know, this is uh, something that can work in relatively uh, large spread out urban areas. I'm originally from metropolitan area Phoenix. Uh, for those of you who have not been to the Phoenix area, it's very much like Los Angeles and pretty much every other large metropolitan area. It's about uh, 16,000 square miles or so of city. I mean, it is massive and uh, you, it's impossible to get anywhere without driving. But it would be great if every morning you're on your way to work and you go, you know what, I need to be at this address and if there's anybody else you know, it sounds like something uh, that would be really useful for carpooling for uh, areas where you primarily have to drive. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. Um, the next story that we have, the Sony Alpha 7 II for the United States apparently has been revealed. Uh, it's the Mark II version of the Alpha 7, um, which... For those of you who don't know, the Alpha 7 is a full-frame mirrorless camera. It was announced in Japan last week, and the company is making it official here in the U.S. as well. It uh, enhances the features of the original camera, adding an in-body stabilization system, faster autofocus, and support for the high bitrate XAVC-S video. The stabilization system is the big news. Mirrorless cameras with smaller sensors like the Olympus OMD EM1 uh, have enjoyed the benefits of in-body stabilization for some time, but this is the first time it's been paired with a full-frame sensor in a mirrorless form factor. The stabilization system corrects for motion on five axes and can work in conjunction with lenses that feature integrated stabilization. So 
this is pretty neat. Uh, you know, I've not really been a huge Sony fan, although I do know uh, in terms of Sony cameras, um, I do know that they make stellar uh, sensors. They've been Nikon sensor supplier for quite some time. My, my major gripe with Canon uh, is the dynamic range. I mean, Canon makes, you know, really good cameras. There's nothing majorly wrong with them. Um, really good uh, colors come out of Canon cameras. I wish they had a little more dynamic range than that they do. You know, they kind of top out right around the 12 to 14 stop range, whereas, uh, uh, you know, Nikon cameras, you can get significantly more dynamic range than that. Although, with that being said, considering that we can only view any of this in 8 bits, um, it's very difficult to, to, you know, you start to get some really high... Uh, HDR like photos once you get much beyond 12 to 14 uh, stops of dynamic range. So, you know, I can understand Canon not really pushing their dynamic range photography for that reason alone. However, uh, you know, it is still one of those things that, you know, Nikon and Canon, uh, Sony, relating back to Sony, Sony has been supplying Nikon sensors for them, for their cameras for quite some time, uh, whereas, or for, for Nikon for quite some time, whereas Canon typically produces designs and manufactures their own sensors. So, um, you know, one of those interest, interesting tidbits, uh, you know, Sony typically uh, gets the Carl Zeiss glass for the lenses. So, you know, coupled with the sensor with the Zeiss glass, they tend to be really, really nice. From RT.com, there's a story here, new era for off-world manufacturing. NASA prints first 3D object in space. This is awesome. Uh, in a historic move, the International Space Station's NASA installed 3D printer has manufactured its first object, a replacement part, for itself. Now we're talking. NASA's zero-G printer, which was designed to operate in zero gravity, was developed in collaboration with Made in Space, a California-based startup, with the aim of eventually being able to manufacture all replacement parts needed in space instead of having have spare parts delivered by rocket from earth uh so pretty awesome i'm looking forward to seeing what else they can do uh manufacturing wise in space you know i mean obviously the goal is to get it to where they can manufacture everything that they need including replacement parts for the printer itself and manufacture all the parts to start making other printers and once you hit that point you know it becomes very um the heck i just got some weird pop-up uh it becomes very uh very easy to to really advance the bar much much further than you would expect to be able to so good on them i'm curious to see uh how things turn out from foxnews.com interstellar science is wormhole travel possible now this is obviously about the interstellar movie um directed by christopher nolan has matthew mcconaughey in it I'm mentioning it here. I've actually not seen the movie yet, and I don't know if I'm going to even be able to make it to see the movie in uh, movie theaters. Um, but um, I do plan at a minimum to uh, see this, or at least buy it or rent it on disc or something of that nature. Um, I just, you know, it's really hard to make it to the movie theater to see a movie that, where I'm probably the only one who wants to see it, especially when I've been spending a, a serious amount of cash taking the family to see kids' movies, which there have been quite a few recently. So, at any rate, um, sci-fi fans who hope humanity can one day zoom to distant corners of this universe via wormholes, as astronauts do in the recent film Interstellar, shouldn't hold their breath, starts the article. Wormholes are theoretical tunnels through the fabric of space and time that could potentially allow rapid travel between widely separated points from one galaxy to another, for example, as depicted in Christopher Nolan's Interstellar, which opened in theaters around the world earlier this month. While wormholes are possible, according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, such exotic voyages will likely remain in the realm of science fiction, uh, said renowned astrophysicist Kip Thorne of the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, who served as an advisor and executive producer on Interstellar. Uh, so, pretty interesting. Um, you know, I thought I would include it here just because it's technology-related and, you know, it's one of those 
things. It's space related and everything. So kind of cool. Uh, that will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quickshrift.com. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, right below the video here in the show notes, um, I've got everything linked up there as well. And uh, thank you for subscribing if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have uh, or have not, thank uh, please, please do subscribe and show your support for the show. You can either subscribe on YouTube or you can go directly to the website and subscribe directly uh, via a podcast feed where you can download it in iTunes or any other podcatcher of choice. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. Hopefully they'll start to be a little more frequent, but uh, I figured I might as well just bite the bullet and do this one. See you then.